Hey everybody. Today we are going to take a look in on my Red Wiggler bin. This is my DIY system that I made out of three 10 gallon totes uh, two or three years ago. So while we're going through the bin today, I wanna to talk about all the different things that I have read about that people use Red Wigglers for and also other compost worms for to save the planet. So stick around if you wanna hear my top 10 things that I've read how these little guys are saving the world. So let's, let's dig through here first and get a look and see if we've got any food left over. But one of the first ways that Red Wigglers and their other composting friends are saving the world is that 28% of items that end up in a landfill actually could be composted. So if you think about everything that you put in the garbage and you think to yourself, could this be composted? Uh, I think mostly it's not the people probably watching this that think about it very closely because we do, but for everybody else that throws everything in the garbage, 28% um, of that could actually be composted either by worms or by normal composting methods. And keeping along with the same line there is that the greenhouse gases that are created from all of the uh, landfills and other things that we should not be throwing away in there. Uh, believe it or not, if everybody did their part, composted and did not throw things in a landfill, that would actually be similar in removing greenhouse gases to the total of 7.8 million cars taken off the road. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Oh, that's this is the, the cocoa husk. I actually wondered when I went to Hawaii, you know, if they could compost these husks um, off of a cocoa plant where you get your beans from your chocolate. And if you look right here, there you go. Worms eating the husk of a theobroma. I think this is definitely going to be a slow food, but I think it's actually going faster than what a avocado shell is. So I'm a little bit surprised by that. Let me know if you've ever tried to compost these husks before in your worm bin. Um, I'm pretty surprised. I really honestly thought these things wouldn't go very fast. Now looking at them very closely, I'm not, I'm seeing some springtails, but I kind of, you know, was thinking that maybe more of the isopods would get into there. But we've got all sorts of little baby worms. Look at that tiny little yellow tail there. Hello, baby. Good worms. All right, so we're going to keep going here and see what other kinds of food do they have left after the three weeks. And uh, here is our obligatory avocado worm ball. They just love that. They just feel all nice and snuggly in there. And who am I to disrupt their snuggliness? I'll just put them back in the corner over here. But looking through, I think that those husks of the chocolate and the avocado is all I'm seeing here in the way of food. And I honestly think these things are gonna go pretty fast. Okay, so now that I have turned all of this over, I'm gonna kind of incorporate the uh, dry bedding from the top. It was getting super wet last time, which is why I left the top off. Or I didn't leave it off off, but I did leave it cracked more than usual. Okay, so let's go look at the next layer down. Okay, here we are on the second layer, and I have my little stands here to keep it from getting compressed. Moving down my list of things that worms are doing to save the world, they are doing bioremediation or vermiremediation, where they uh, strategically insert, and many of the, the studies that I've read actually have been done using the red wigglers, but basically they're adding worms to a mildly mildly contaminated soil so obviously you know if it was super contaminated with oil or diesel or or something like that it would kill the worms but in order to get the soil ready to be used again uh, people have been adding worms and they are actually doing a great job cleaning the soil of all of those uh, like a diesel spill or something like that because the worms have the ability to take in all of that stuff and uh, take it out of the soil so it goes with the worms. I don't think we fed down here. Let's see. 
Another thing that they can manage to pull out of the soil is glycophos glycophosphate uh, weed killers. Um, you know, the kind that you normally spray in the cracks of your sidewalk to kill weeds. You know which one I'm talking about. That one. Uh, in small doses, the worms can actually pull that out of the soil. Good worms indeed. Number five, they can actually get rid of insecticides like organophosphates. And again, all in small doses. Worms uh, aren't bulletproof that I'm aware of. Going down to the lower level here. If you're enjoying this content, why not give those little worms a muddy thumbs up? And if you want to see what my worms do next, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Okay, so we'll get rid of our risers again here. Cut them off to the side till we reconstruct everything. So another thing, and I'm sure this is like a newer thing, um, probably more younger people are up on all of the uh, different compounds that have been discovered to be dangerous, but one of them are PAHs, which is polyaromatic hydrocarbons. And one of the things that, according to the research that I did, is, you know, you can look on Wikipedia and all that. But basically, anytime you burn something organic, the residue left behind is a PAH. So worms in the soil around things that have been burned, and I think this includes things like wood and, and things like that. They were saying that like if you charbroil food that you could be introducing PAH into your body. I don't know what the, uh, you know, limits are that hurt people, but apparently worms can just remove those as they go along their happy way. And then on to something a little bit happier that we kind of already knew about in the gardening industry is that um, worms, oops, there's a little worm ball down here, worms can mineralize organic matter and sequester it into the soil itself, helping our garden and also helping our planet. In fact, you know, as far back as, uh, you know, the early 1900s, they did notice that worms, as they moved through the soil, were actually capable of removing heavy metals. Now, of course, in order to get the heavy metals to go away permanently, you do have to take the worms that have absorbed them. Seems to not hurt the worms, but uh, in order to keep them out of the soil when the worm dies, you got to get rid of the worms. So that's kind of unfortunate for that particular process. And lastly, lastly, uh, worms are not just by themselves, they're being used in conjunction with other bioremediators, such as bacteria and fungus, to clean up industrial waste sites. So, you know, like we always say, the worm bin is an ecosystem, and apparently the remediation ecosystem also requires worms to have their little friends. All right, let's get this stacked back up, and we will get these guys fed. It's been about three weeks since we fed them, and I'm not really seeing anything except for those really hard husks of the cocoa. So these are guys are ready for a good feeding. I'm going to feed on this second layer here. Put my little spacers in here. And it does seem to be working. This was nowhere near as compacted as it has been in the past. So I don't remember exactly who told me to do this, but uh, thank you. That was a good idea. Let me know in the comments below if you've heard about these different things where they've added worms to soil and they've helped clean it up. They, uh, it's pretty amazing. You kind of look at worms and you think how delicate they are. And, uh, you know, each little, each little worm is just all just a squishy little thing. How can this thing actually help with uh, industrial waste? But they've got amazing amounts of enzymes and bacteria in their gut that does all sorts of wonderful chemistry. Okay, so today they're going to get avocado, bread, looks like tea bags and bananas, and a little more cabbage. This should keep them for another couple of weeks. I think that's a pretty good feeding for them. So I'm gonna lightly cover that up and put the top of the bin on. So there we go. I don't wanna feed up here today because I think I have another mouse in the basement. I don't know where they come from or how they get in, but here they are. Well, if you like this content, I have an entire playlist just for the Red Wigglers, which I will put over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.